finally Friday, so all is good. That's it. That's it. No. Yeah, yeah, pretty much that. Uh, I wanna. I'm gonna hit record in a second. Oh, I just did. And uh, and and I want to talk about echoes from a mass. <laughs> I want to talk about. I want to talk about Greenleaf. I want to talk about the album and the band and all that stuff. Uh, provided that's cool with you. So I I yeah. appreciate you uh, taking the time out. So thank you, Tommy. It's always nice to talk, Tommy. <laughs> um you are more than 20 years removed from the first greenleaf ep 20 years removed from revolution rock uh and this is this is hans's second record with you guys um, yeah so greenleaf having a stable lineup um and and after all the people who have kind of come and gone along the way uh how does how does being able to kind of know who's going to be there and and know what they bring to the band how does that change your approach either in writing or recording or, or at any point or does it of course it's it's a lot easier now when we know that we have a yeah, the, a bass player for example that will be there for the next record because now we don't have to rehearse yeah, the old songs with a new, new bass player or a drummer or whatever. Now we can just concentrate on writing, writing songs. So of course it's a lot easier when you have a steady lineup, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, no. So, and, it, and, if, it, and, it, and it, yeah, it feels good to have a. Yeah, it's the second record with the same lineup now, so it's. It makes things a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of that's kind of amazing and to I, think, I, though. Yeah, and a lot of times people keep asking asking us why have there been so many lineup lineup changes and whatever, and and people have to understand that from the beginning it was just a side project for me, right. and it was it was kind of me and Don called Daniel Lidé and started a band. It was we wanted to be a, like a classic seventies rock band kind of, mm -hmm. and it was just because of love the 70s music and the we kind of wanted to be like the desert sessions thing you know mm -hmm. just a bunch of people friends coming over and whoever wanted to be on the record could be on the record you know <laughs> that's why there were so many singers and yeah different yeah a couple of guitar players and so it was just all about fun but then yeah later on yeah there has been a few <laughs> few lineup changes first yeah that was the first period of greenleaf second one was with oscar from truck fighters on vocals mm -hmm. i did we did was it like yeah two albums with him on vocals yeah yep and okay we changed lineup between those two albums also it was yep. just oscar and me <laughs> but that's because people don't have time they have kids and families and so it was just okay we just asked some other yeah, Ulle from uh, Dozer plays on Nest of Vipers and yep. Johan Rockner plays guitar. So, yeah. <laughs> and after after that, yeah, when when yeah, Dozer went on, yeah, we went on a break, a long break. So I, I felt I missed playing live. Yeah. So I wanted to do it for real again. I, I had to like two, three years off when I didn't tour or anything. Mm -hmm. So it felt like it was time. And I wanted to do, we did one tour with Oscar on vocals with Greenleaf. And it I felt remember, like, I okay, saw, I, I, yeah, I saw yeah, the were, Desert were, Fest set. You, yeah. yeah, you were in London. We met in London, yep. I remember. Yep. yep. But it felt like we need, we need to play more. And I want to take this more seriously now. And, and Oscar, yeah, he had, he, he had truck fighters. And he was busy pretty much all the time, and it felt like it's yeah, it's time to change again. <laughs> so yeah, then the lineup totally changed, except for Bengt. Bengt was there from the beginning. It was pretty much just him and me from the start until yeah, trails and passes. Mm -hmm. I think he left in like two thousand fifteen or something. Okay. 
that's when it got to be, yeah, we wanted to take, yeah, when Arvid and Sebastian joined the band, Trails and Passes turned out so good, so it felt like, okay, we have to tour, we have to tour a lot, and it was too much for Bengt, so he had to quit the band, and, and then Johan joined the band from Dozer on yep. bass, and after a while it was too much for him, <laughs> so it was, okay, don't worry about it, we find someone else. And then, yeah, Hans joined the band. So, but yeah, the, yeah, like I said, a lot of people ask me, why are you, are you such a hard person to work with? Or <laughs> what's, what's wrong with you? Why don't you, why is it yes. you left from the start? And, and it's not that it's that, yeah, it's, it's life for the other members of the band. It's kids life and too much touring and whatever. It's not, it's my, not my fault that we have had like, I don't right. know, 15, 20 members in the band in the end. Right, of course. But at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, your, your goals for the band have changed, right? Like, yeah, decide, yeah. you know, deciding after, after Arvid and Sebastian joined that it's time to hit the road. That's, a, you know, that Greenleaf is going to be an active touring band. That's a big change. Yeah, 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 it is. And it was, like I said, it was too much for Bengt. He was with us for like, yeah, maybe a year that we toured a lot. Mm -hmm. And then it was, yeah, it was too much for him. So he had, yeah, he, he didn't want to be on the road so much. So he, he just quit the band. And of course he should, because he had a job and family and, and he's blind. So it's totally understand why he left the band. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you think of kind of, or I guess, how do you think about the, the different eras of the band? Of course, you've had different lineups and, and you mentioned Oscar did two records and then you had, uh, you know, Frederick and Peter have come and gone and, and, and you know, all these sort of different lineups and, and now things, now that things have kind of settled lineup wise, hopefully, right? Uh, <laughs> how do you think about the kind of different eras of the band what are the the landmarks along the way for you trails and passes like has to be one right? yeah that's everything before that it was still just a side project for me mm -hmm. it was more yeah definitely from from trails and passes and forward it's been more serious more a real band trying to focus more on the songwriting and try to make it better because yeah it's the only band I'm in before that I had Dozer I had to focus more on Dozer and just the Greenleaf stuff was just for fun and more more like yeah yeah like <laughs> more like a side project you know yeah yeah and it was I mean back in the back in the early Greenleaf days it was so much easier also everything because it was fresh new playing more 70s influenced rock music and it mm -hmm. was like you could just hit two three chords and oh that's a good song and yeah but nowadays after Arvid joined the band okay trails and passes we wrote that one pretty fast it went because the energy that we got from Arvid and and the way he was singing and we got so and we got a real kick in the ass from from him only so the songs just flew out of us mm -hmm. from me and Bengt to Sebastian we just I don't know how long it took us to write that album. It, yeah, it can't have been that long. So everything went easy by then. And then after that, for every every album, it takes a little bit longer because you try to try to stay fresh and not to repeat yourself too much, and try to come up with something that feels new, kind of, especially for for us for ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. to make it yeah to because. For me, it would be boring to write the same song over and over again. Of course. So I want something to feel fresh. And then it feel like, okay, this is it. Here we have something that feels really good. So yeah, the, the different, yeah, your question was, yeah, until Trails and Passes, it was a project and now it's been a real band. So talk about the, the progression then. From from trails and passes through rise above the meadow, here are the rivers, and now echoes from a mass. And that, where do you 
feel like that process of, of coming, you know, coming up with something new for you has, has led the band? Well, it's, you can still hear all the basic, the, the influences that we have, but still there's a lot of new things coming in all the time from, it's not only like 70s rock and whatever nowadays, it's more, there's more, I don't know, okay, we were blues here before, but there's more blues now and there's, with Arvid, there's more soul mm -hmm. and there's, there's jazz and there's whatever, yeah, we're all listening to all kinds of music. So we're kind of growing and it's, it's not like we will ever do like a jazz record, but there's, there might be some hints of jazz influences in there, even though some people might not hear it, but we, yeah, we're influenced by it, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah, for every album, yeah. For example, right at now, I, will not, I, don't, I don't know where we're going with the next album. It has to start with just writing a bunch of songs. And then after a while, after maybe like five, six songs or something, you start to get the feeling, okay, we're going this way this time. So then you continue writing a little bit more in that direction. And you write maybe, I don't know. Okay, for example, for Echoes from a Mass, I think we had like 14, 15 song ideas. And then we recorded 10 of, of them. Mm -hmm. There were a bunch of songs more, they were more classic Greenleaf, more, yeah, more like, let's say more, more fun songs, not so serious, <laughs> you know, like good old goats and, you know, the, yes. what we call like car driving songs, like trains and passes and, but the, the, it didn't feel right. It felt like we had done all, okay, they, they, they were good, but it felt like we had already done those songs. Mm -hmm. It felt like we would, weren't coming up with anything fresh. But okay, maybe we will just re, yeah, work on them a bit more for the next album, and maybe they, some of them will turn up on the next album. Maybe we don't know that yet, until we have started working, and then we start. Yeah, you, after a while, you find them. What's it called? Like the, like a theme, mm -hmm. and then you start hearing that. Okay, this album will be more like this or that. So that's that's how it usually works because yeah right now i don't yeah like i said i don't have a clue how the next greenleaf album will sound i have yeah we have a few riffs from that didn't make made did make this album and i have a few new ones but i don't have a clue how it will sound in the end because in the end it, it depends on what arvid will come up with also this time yeah it, last year was a tough year for him with, um, yeah, he got divorced and then the pandemic and all that. So it was, a, the album Echoes from a Mass is definitely a bit, a bit darker than the previous albums. Yeah. Especially lyrically. It's, it's the first time out of it writes, yeah, the, all, I think most of the lyrics are really personal. Mm -hmm. I, you definitely yeah. get that that vibe in listening to the album for sure. Yeah. Um, a lot of the, even what comes across, uh, as sort of the bluesier stuff has that, has that personal edge to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. so it was really hard to write a new, like good old goat trying to be more fun and, you know, right. happy. <laughs> right. When, when I wasn't feeling so good. So it was, yeah, it was, I couldn't bring any of those riffs to him and say, okay, Sing something happy now. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's a harder sell in, in yeah, getting yeah, divorced yeah. in a pandemic. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. That makes sense, actually. Um, well, okay. How has? I mean, I'm interested to know specifically how the kind of how your working relationship with Arvid has has developed to this point. You know, for records, you have to be somewhat more comfortable in kind of judging what is working for him and what isn't in terms of, you know, what you're bringing musically. Um, how is it for you to kind of be able to realize that, that like those happier songs 
maybe aren't aren't sitting as uh, aren't sitting right for me as long as we write a good album it doesn't matter if it's happy or sad or whatever as long as the songs feel good when when we're for example if we were in the rehearsal room and we're playing a song song idea or whatever and you hear Arvid start singing to it and you start smiling then we know okay this is good even though if he's singing some yeah whatever is sad stuff <laughs> but if yeah if it feels good it feels good doesn't matter if it's happy or sad you know because the song in the end will make you feel good even if the lyrics are if the lyrics are really dark it doesn't for me personally it doesn't really matter because the song makes me feel good in the end if you if you know what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. here absolutely absolutely but yeah working with out of it from the start with trails and passes it's been really easy hmm. and like you said then after that for every album we have done now it's 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 getting easier and easier because i know now exactly what he needs to make those really good vocal melodies mm. mm -hmm. i have a when we for for example when me and sebastian in rehearsal room trying to figure yeah write a song idea i know that he needs a certain amount of chords to make it really good mm -hmm. okay of course he okay. could we could of course he would probably do good also if he would just do one chord but still <laughs> there's a certain chord progression that I know that this will work for him. And yeah, there's a few on the, it's not, not just one chord right, progression. Right, right. Because then we would write the same song over and over again. But I, 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 yeah, and we both, I think we both think the same way when, when it comes to writing songs. It's, for me, it's, um, first of all, having a riff that sticks to your head that sticks when you hear it once and you're, yeah, you can't stop thinking about the riff or the melody on guitar. And then really good vocal melodies on top of that. That's, yeah, also sticks to you. And then you have the best, best of, <laughs> best of both worlds, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That's what we try to do all the time. Cause, and yeah, for example, on, on tides, Mm -hmm. That was, that's probably one of the, okay, not that Greenleaf has ever written like complicated music or anything, but this is the, it's a really simple song. Mm -hmm. I had the chords, the intro, the chorus chords from home. We met up in the rehearsal room. We played that. Arvid just started improvising on top of that. And the verse, it just the song kind of wrote itself, you know, and it just took those three mm -hmm. notes and Arvid started singing and it, okay, the song is ready. We have the chorus and we have the verse. <laughs> Cause he came, I, I think we put that song together in like 20 minutes. And then and it of leads off the worked. album. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause it felt, it felt fresh in a way. Cause usually, usually I, I can overthink mm. riffs and, songs when I'm at home working on them. What if you play it like this? Or when, if it, is it better if I play it like that? And, it, you know, I can sit for hours with just one idea and just try to figure out which way is the best way to play it. Yeah. <laughs> so it felt, felt really fresh and it felt good to, that something just came out so fast, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But okay, we put a little bit more time into get the, the arrangement of the song ready and the solo part and all that. But overall, it was written really fast. The same thing with the, the last song, What Have We Become. Okay. I had that, I had the guitar part ready and brought it to the rehearsal room. Arvid was there. I just played it. Arvid just started improvising vocals. Okay, this is ready. We don't even need drums or anything. This, this, this is good how it yeah. is. And then we came up with the second part of the song when the drums come in and that was also, yeah, maximum like 
half an hour, one hour in the rehearsal room, and we had the basic song. So where was the where was the challenge then? Where were you? You know, you mentioned before, sort of struggling to get that that fresh feel. You know, I think the song that we worked the longest on is "Hang On." Really? Yeah. Okay. And we had that. We had. I had that riff already when we recorded "Here the Rivers." Mm-hmm. But it's one of those things that it's it's that's more like a for me like a typical Greenleaf song. Mm-hmm. And then to try to make it special. In, not to sound like any of the other songs. So, yeah, try to make it special for me or, or the other guys. Not to yeah. feel like, okay, this feels like something that we have already done. So I think we worked on that. Yeah, we had it for, I don't know, three, three four years to riff at least. Wow. Okay, mate. Okay, mate. Let's see. Uh, three years. Yeah. And to get, get it to work, you know, with the, yeah, the riff is cool and the groove is cool, but then the rest, the, yeah, you need a good good verse and yeah, everything has to feel good and so that that one took a long time. What finally put it over the top? In the end, I think it was the way Arvid was singing it. I wasn't okay. It's I don't know. Maybe it's the chorus that we're not trying to. Usually it's like, okay, going down on the verse and then boom, there comes the chorus, but it's yeah. more like. Yeah, steady. You know what I mean? Steady yeah, throughout. More steady. I don't know. Maybe it's that. I'm not sure. But in the end, yeah, the version we recorded, that was the, the best that we could come up with. And yeah, on the album, it sounds amazing, I think. And that has a lot to do with Don, Carl Daniel's recording and the mixing of it. Because, yeah, the choruses, the guitar sound and the drums and everything sounds so, that it sounds really good. I, you know, of course I wanted to talk about Carl Daniel producing. Uh, how could I not? But, <laughs> um, you know, the 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 thing that, that struck me is, you know, you're talking about sort of Arvid bringing more, more melody in, uh, in vocally. It seems like even more than on hear the rivers, there's, there's space in the songs for that. It's almost, you know, you're, you're leaving room for him in a way that that's speaks to me of kind of how close you've come to work together. Um, t- you brought up tides. I, that's a perfect example is there's, yeah. there's, you know, the guitar it's not it's not sitting back necessarily but you're allowing him space to kind of flesh out his own his own melody and you I hear think, that i think this, the record yeah especially like i said on tides it was yeah the verse was just improvised in the rehearsal room and he started singing i just played those three notes and he started singing and i so thought that yeah i don't need to play more because the vocals are that's it's good i don't because then i can just take a step back Mm-hmm. Usually, Arvid, li- he lives in Stockholm, so he's not there every rehearsal that we have him every writing songs. Then, we're pretty much writing instrumental music that he puts vocals on top. Right. And when you do that, the whole song has to be interesting without vocals. So maybe that's why, you, yeah, like you have heard it on mm-hmm. yeah, on Tides, and I take a step back because it's, yeah, then it's easier when I have the when we're, when we're writing the song and the vocals are there, then it's easier for me to take a step back with the guitar. Right. Tell me so about... I think it has a lot to do with that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead, please. Well, yeah, like I said, it's. I think that's why there is more space for the vocals because some songs we finish working together in the rehearsal room with out of it on vocals. So. Mm-hmm. How did uh, On Wings of Gold come together? Yeah, that's, I think pretty much all the parts, like usually I write the guitar parts at home on on my acoustic guitar. And then the rest, yeah, it's just, for example, for this album, yeah, with the pandemic, Hans wasn't able to come to Sweden so many times. It was mostly me and Sebastian on drums in the rehearsal room 
-hmm. And Banked was there for a few, yeah, I don't know how many rehearsals, maybe five, six rehearsals, just to, yeah, fill in on bass. But yeah, that song, I write riffs at home, bring it to the other guys at rehearsal room. And then I have the parts ready, but I don't have a clue how the song will end up in the end. We just try to put the parts together and yeah, just jam on them until it feels feels right. Mm -hmm. And then recording, simple recording on the phone, email to Arvid, and then yeah, he comes up with a vocal idea. Same thing there, he just records a simple vocal idea and then, then we, yeah that's how we worked on this album hmm. just emailing songs back and forth with ideas and yeah i can't exactly say how what else with on wings of gold it's it's like you write every song just <laughs> playing guitar and then meeting the other guys and jamming on the ideas just another green song started, Suddenly, it's a song. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm interested in in talking about uh, writing last year. Obviously, you know, things are different. You said Hans couldn't come <clears throat> with the lockdowns and, and everything. Yeah. Um, you mentioned before having these songs that were sort of fun. You know, uh, not, that, not that the songs aren't the record, aren't fun. We, we established that but having the the more upbeat uh material that that didn't make the record but that you were working on in the middle of the global pandemic how much of that do you think was kind of maybe escapism or or just sort of looking to like ha huh, you know things everywhere are really heavy maybe finding a little bit of joy in that in that upbeat jamming For me personally, writing music is it's always a way to escape. It's therapy and then you know you work I have a day job, I work Monday to Friday and picking up a guitar and playing for a little bit, it's just just disconnect everything that's going on. And of course with the pandemic, yeah, you just yeah, <laughs> just pick up your guitar and play and you forget everything for a little while. But I don't think it's even before the pandemic, it was the same things that just the pandemic hasn't really influenced me in the songwriting, mm -hmm. with the songwriting, you know. But yeah, when when we write songs, we try to, I think in the end, it's just about making your self feel good mm -hmm. to write that song that makes you yeah you know, like i said before that makes you smile that makes you get that feeling that's what i'm always since the beginning when we started dozer and Reef and you know it, like i said yeah it was easier back then to write that song that made you made you smile that oh now we made the best song in the world you know <laughs> <laughs> but still you keep after what is it now? It's like with those who we with those who we started like twenty six years. Is it twenty six years now? Fuck. Ninety. Ninety five. Ninety five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm still looking for that feeling mm -hmm. that I got back then when you wrote the song and it's like, oh yeah, this is good. So that's what it's all about. It's it's about getting that feeling that rush that you get when you play a song to especially together with the other guys and you and it just yeah it just feels so damn good that's what it's all about it's about feeling good and it's yeah like i said earlier it's a bit like therapy if, if, if after a hard week at work or whatever you worked your ass off and just come home on a Friday and then just pick up your guitar after your kid goes to sleep, pick up the guitar, play it a little bit. And, ah. and it, it's not every day that something good comes out, but right. at least I've got to play a little bit. And sometimes you get frustrated. Oh fuck, this sounds like shit. Why can't, 
usually you can have like weeks or months that it feels like you can't come up with anything good. But then suddenly you can come up with like three, four, five ideas in a, in a row pretty much. You just, I just, you should see my phone. I have, I don't know how many recordings I have on, on my phone. Like I just press record on my phone. I think probably a couple of thousand, mm-hmm. but it goes, it goes like five, six years back. <laughs> <laughs> the full catalog. Yeah. So like, yeah, it's, it's all about feeling good mm-hmm. to get that feeling. And it's the same with the live shows mm. to be on stage. And when everything clicks with us four on stage and the crowd is good, there's nothing better than that. But most of the time there's at least one guy in the band that's okay. This show sucked. <laughs> I played, <laughs> I fucked up there and there, wherever, <laughs> but every once in a while that, it actually happens that everything is just perfect. And Every then, now and then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How often is the guy saying, ah, I fucked up you? Every second show. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> when was the last show you played, by the way? That was in January last year in Switzerland. Okay. Okay. It's been a while. Mm, mm-hmm. yeah. I should think so. Are you, I mean, I'm starting to see tour dates for the fall, at least bands doing kind of domestic shows. Are you thinking about returning to? Uh, hopefully we will do, I know that we will not do a full, full length tour this year, mm-hmm. but it's being planned for next year. Okay. But hopefully we will do at least like weekends or Something. Yeah, one-off shows. Yeah. yeah, we have a few shows booked, and let's see what happens. Mm. At the moment, it looks yeah for the summer. I'm not sure if there's. I know we were booked for Hellfest, and that yeah, of course, that's a huge festival. So that's postponed to next year. Okay. You guys but were we doing few... Esberg, Esbjerg Festival, right in Denmark. Were you still doing that, or was that last year? Yeah, now we we're, we're supposed to do it in May this year. Okay. But mm-hmm. yeah, let's mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah we we're booked we're booked to do it. Okay. But there there we have some problems with for yeah I don't know really know it's too, if I can talk about it at the moment okay. but uh, yeah. Okay. Under- is, understood. Is, yeah. Because we we've been, yeah, we've been. I've been emailing with our booking agency today, and it's. It looks like we might have to cancel the show. Oh. They 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 are still doing it. Yeah. But yeah. It, it, we 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 will have problems, especially from for Hans, going from Germany and then back to, uh, going from Germany to Denmark and then right. back, right. and then he has to. Be in quarantine for five days after he gets back and then then do the test again mm-hmm. and that means he can't go to work for a whole week and we're not getting paid that much <laughs> right so right i wish i could i wish no, I could and, pay hans hey man i wish we could pay hans to stay home for a week but right. we can't afford it right missing a missing a week of work that yeah, yeah. that counts absolutely that's a, that's a lot of that's a lot of money in the end so yeah so and as it looks in Sweden now with the pandemic, it's yeah, it's worse now than it was back in let's say April, May last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my understand so, my understanding was I, I mean I've, I've I've done a few Swedish interviews lately, and my understanding was that like last spring wasn't that terrible for you guys, whereas here last spring was was a nightmare, Har- you know, kind of a horror show, uh, even yeah. though it wasn't the worst of it, which was this winter. Uh, but you know, but you you say you're getting it now. Yeah, it's the, it's the worst now. I think that's what I've heard on the news. We had it in yeah, it was in April, May last year, and the summer was okay, and then in October, November it was. Yeah. So I think this is this is the third wave of something that we're having now, and it apparently it's the worst so far. Hmm. Yeah. So and like. <laughs> 
we live in Sweden, we don't have any rules. We only have the recommendations. Right. <laughs> so they recommend us not to travel, but yeah, of course we could have done that show and yeah, but. Understood, yeah. understood. Yeah. So touring next year, <laughs> yeah. Touring next year and hopefully a few shows this year, one-off shows. Right. I because uh, we have a we have a new album out and we can't go on tour. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that's got to be different too, right? You you took yeah. you took Greenleaf from being, you know, this fun Bobby, you know, kind of classic rock side project, turn it into a working band, and now you put out a record you can't tour. <laughs> yeah, but in one way it's good because I think a lot of people have been dying to get new good albums. Mm. It's been the pandemic and yeah, at least true. Yeah, there's a there's a handful of bands releasing albums now around this time now. So, just, but before earlier last year, I don't know how many was there. A lot of stuff a got few, put, but, a lot of stuff got pushed back and then yeah. sort of came in the fall. And you're right, a lot of stuff is is that would have come out last fall is coming out now. And and yeah, 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 yeah feels yeah, like bands good. are finally comfortable releasing stuff again. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully. If you go on tour, yeah, we will go on tour next year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not say hopefully, we will go on tour next year. <laughs> hopefully yeah. people will still remember this album. I'm pretty sure they will, because so far the response has been really good. And, and I'm pretty sure people want to hear the new songs live. So I'm not, I'm not worried about yeah. that. <laughs> so, um, you know, you, met, you said when you started writing last year that, that early... 2021 was kind of your your goal and you made it so congratulations yeah. on that um how much of that was working with with carl daniel sort of being you know it, again it, it goes to kind of a level of familiarity right you guys are, are there's that 26 year plus relationship going back yeah uh and and i think he you know particularly this material <laughs> it's you know so broad and kind of atmospheric he he fits that really well um before i let you go can you just talk a little bit talk a little bit about working with him on these songs in that situation in the in the pandemic and and god knows what else i think this time was not so different from the previous times it's he lives in germany nowadays also so we don't we don't really meet up that often but it's usually as soon as we have some songs recorded, yeah, like I talked about earlier, some shitty phone recordings with vocals, I usually send him, yeah, I email him and he can just check him out. So he knows where, we, where we're going song-wise this time. Mm -hmm. I think for this album, he probably had like, he didn't have all the songs, maybe like six, seven songs or something. So he gets a little, a little picture at least before we enter the studio, but the rest comes in the studio sound wise. He heard, yeah, he, I think he heard Needle in My Eye. That song was written, that must have been like early. That wasn't last year, it was a year before that. So it was 2019, I guess, around there, early 2019. Okay. Yeah, around there and he was here visiting me in that summer and I played it for him I was like holy shit this is one of the best Greenleaf songs I've ever heard and this will be really good and he got excited right away when uh -huh. should we record the album when, <laughs> when, when should we record the next album okay we have to wait at least maybe at, after the summer in 2020 I told him hmm. but said yeah it was in October so yeah Working with him is always a pleasure because I don't have to think so much. We just go into the uh, studio, start recording. And he always has a plan. He always has some new microphones or whatever he wants, wants to try out. <laughs> oh, I bought this, I bought that, and I have this, and now it will sound even better this time. And it's, it's, yeah, I think, yeah, it's, like I said, always a pleasure to work with him because he's always excited when we get there. To make a new Greenleaf album, and it, and, and it's and, and it's so easy for us because we don't have to. We just have to play the songs, and it, 
what comes out in the end, it sounds amazing. So, right. And of course, you, you trust say, that, right? There's that trust yeah, there again. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have to explain things to him. He knows exactly what we want. And, and we trust him also when he comes with something that is a little bit different that maybe we haven't had before. And it's like, if you, yeah, usually it sounds, okay, I don't know if he has ever sent me a mix that I've been like, oh, this doesn't, this doesn't feel right or sound good. It's always some been, for every album we do, he... I, I think he gets better and better for every album. He has always something that makes it feel even better than the previous album. Mm -hmm. And it's especially with the drums, the drum sound. And yeah, and for me, it's drums and bass album, on the drums and bass on this record. Yeah. 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 And I'm really satisfied with the guitar sound also this time. Rightfully so. Usually. Yeah. And usually, after a while, when you release the album, you start hearing those small things that you get a little bit annoyed about that didn't turn out exactly how you wanted it to sound or whatever. For example, the song Trails and Passes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what it is about that recording. I can't really listen to that song. It's a, it's a great song to play live. And I like, I love playing it live because it's, mm -hmm. It's a really fun song to play, play, but there's something it's, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it, it's a mixing. It's maybe something how we played it or there's something that annoys me. So I, if that song pops up on, if I'm listening to, yeah, listening to the album, I just, I yeah, usually just turn it off. <laughs> Skip it. But huh? so far on, on, on every album, I, there is some, some things, maybe a, one guitar, it can just be a, a note on the guitar that feel, that doesn't feel good <laughs> so, but on this album so far it i've had the mix for like four months or something four mm -hmm. or five months and i just i listened to the album again like a few days ago and it and it still feels good there's nothing i'm annoyed about so stop so listening far, to it <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> right don't listen to it again yeah so so far for me personally Sound-wise, it's the best album we have done. Because I'm happy with all the songs, how, it, how, how they sound. But right. then when it comes to the songwriting, of course, we can do it even better. <laughs> That's what the next record's for. Yeah. Uh, exactly. If you, get, if you get satisfied with the songwriting and the sound, you can just stop playing. Because <laughs> you always need a goal to reach for, you know. Because I know that we can always write better songs. That's, that's and then it's yeah and hopefully the people will keep liking it so so you could tour but first <laughs> first yeah first first of all we write the music for ourselves i know it's, it's yeah that's what you do to try to satisfy yourself first with the music and then if people like it it's awesome then then it's perfect it's great uh, I'm going to, I'm going to stop the recording and let you go. I know it's getting on Friday evening, uh, out your way, but Tommy, before I, I before I, I stop the recording and, and don't hang up, uh, thank you. Thank you, Tommy. This is, this was a, a, an absolute pleasure to talk to you. I, I very much appreciate it. Uh, and congratulations on the album. I'm glad you like it because I like it too. Uh, <laughs> thank you. So hang on just a second.